Hangman Adam Page is one of the most interesting and complex characters in pro wrestling today and has gotten over massively due to his cowboy charm. On the surface, he's this lovable softy who likes to have a little bit to drink from time to time, but if you look deeper, there's a lot more going on. The anxious millennial cowboy is literally the personification of this sad cowboy meme. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hangman's journey in AEW has been turbulent to say the least. His story started way before AEW. Hangman came up in Ring of Honor and the Young Bucks saw him and took him under their wing and brought him into the Bullet Club, which was top of the wrestling world at this point. The Young Bucks described him as the type of guy you could build a wrestling company around. Hangman also met Kenny Omega when Kenny was at the peak of his popularity during his New Japan days as the leader of the Bullet Club. Hangman went on to become a part of their lead and they went on to form AEW, which emerged as WWE's biggest competitor in almost 20 years. Hangman Page found immediate success in AEW, winning the inaugural AEW Men's Casino Battle Royale, which earned him a title shot for the vacant AEW World Championship against Chris Jericho. The Young Bucks were known for accompanying Kenny Omega in his big matches and being at ringside, especially for his classic matches against the Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. So because of this, Hangman Adam Page asked the Young Bucks to be in his corner during the World Championship match with Jericho at All Out, but the Young Bucks said no. So the stage was set at AEW. W all out Hangman Adam Page versus Chris Jericho and the Young Bucks were not in Hangman's corner. Hangman wanted to win this match so so bad. Even in the build up to the match he even went as far as removing the stitches from his forehead to show his resolve but unfortunately he lost and he took this loss hard. He felt betrayed by the Young Bucks and he felt that he let everybody down so he told the Young Bucks that he wants to leave the elite because he wants to get his head right for a while and the Young Bucks were reluctant to let him go and they refused to let him leave. Remember this interesting detail for later on in the video. And this is the start of Hangman's intense resentment for the Young Bucks. Hangman also starts to drink because he feels like a failure. At first, his whole drinking thing was kind of a funny, cool character quirk, as he felt like a millennial version of Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> But then it kind of got concerning and it didn't take long for viewers to realize there was something much, much deeper going on. Hangman was running away from himself. Hangman was at a really low point and surprisingly, so was Kenny Omega. The man who took New Japan Pro Wrestling to great heights was struggling in AEW as he took three big pay-per-view losses in a row against Jericho, Park, and John Moxley. Him and Hangman were effectively in the same boat and they had no beef between them, unlike with Hangman and the Young Bucks, so they decided to form a tag team. Hangman and Kenny's tag team was sort of in discord at first because of Hangman's resentment towards the Young Bucks. Hangman even admitted in an interview that at times he's actively trying to sabotage his tag team with Kenny Omega. And this was evident on screen as sometimes they were out of sync. They very slowly started to become more and more cohesive. And even though Kenny Omega didn't approve of Hangman's drinking, they got over the differences, started raking up a bunch of wins and became tag team champions. Despite this monumental achievement though, Hangman Adam Page was evidently still struggling and was still a massive problem. Hangman was riddled with self-doubt and he didn't believe in himself and was using alcohol as a crutch to get him through his problems. Hangman still had some major issues with the Young Bucks at this point as he was still hurt by their betrayal and he acted out towards them because of this. And at this point the Young Bucks were beyond repairing the broken friendship that they had with Hangman Adam Page and they fed into the toxic back and forth and they berated Hangman for his drinking and they told him that he's letting everybody down and that he was just a jobber before they took him under their wing. Kenny Omega is just a bystander in all of this beef and he's close friends with Hangman and the Young Bucks and he's kind of caught in the middle. All of this intense beef culminated in a tag team match at AEW Revolution for the AEW World Tag Team Championships with Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page versus the Young Bucks. And this was one of the greatest tag team matches in history, if not the best tag team match in history. It was rated 6 stars by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and is the highest rated tag team match of all time. This match was universally appraised because of its brilliant wrestling interweave with its masterful storytelling. And Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega picked up the win. But what happened after the match was especially interesting. The Young Bucks left the ring and for a second or two, it looked like Hangman was about to buckshot Larry at Kenny Omega. And watching this was agonizing. Could Hangman Page damn himself into hell? Could Hangman Page turn on the one person who believes in him? Will Hangman Adam Page finally succumb to his demons? 
And the answer is no. Hangman may be going through a lot, but he's still a decent human being. He held the ropes down for Kenny and led him through the ropes and embraced him. And the plot thickens. After the match, Hangman and the Bucks continue to fall out, and Hangman even goes as far as telling his opponents how to beat the Young Bucks. And whoa! Hangman has a long <laughs> Then the pandemic began, and the story of Hangman loses all momentum for a few months as he doesn't appear on Dynamite. But something significant does happen, as Brody Lee debuts on AEW Dynamite on the first pandemic show as the leader of the Dark Order. A few months later, Hangman fills out a form to be part of the Dark Order, but it gets lost. And this is also very significant, so you should remember it for later. But anyway, the, at this point, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega enter into a feud with Chris Jericho's inner circle. And while the elite are being attacked, Hangman runs down the length of the field to save his former friends. And this sets up the main event for AEW's Double or Nothing 2020 with the elite and Matt Hardy versus the inner circle in a stadium stampede match. And for one night, all is right within the elite and bygones are bygones. And the elite picked up the win over the inner circle and all was right with the world. But then enter FTR, formerly known as the Revival in WWE. And thank God they left WWE. Hangman almost immediately starts hanging out with FTR because he's known them for longer than he has known the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. And FTR also from North Carolina like Hangman Adam Page. And they also like to drink like Hangman Adam Page, unlike the elite who are all straight edge. On paper, FTR and Hangman Adam Page seems like a match made in heaven, but something more sinister is actually at play. FTR are only using Hangman Adam Page to manipulate their way into a tag team title shot as they see that he has relations with the Young Bucks. Hangman is so lonely at this point and is so desperate for friendship that he doesn't see what they're trying to do. FTR know the truth, so they tell it to Hangman. They tell him that his friends hate him and Hangman believes it. and they convince Hangman to interfere in a Young Bucks match so that the Young Bucks don't become number one contenders. Hangman follows through with FTR's orders under the guise of being a good friend and after Hangman caused the Young Bucks to lose, this was the lowest Hangman has ever gotten and you could see the pain and anguish just from the look in his eyes. Hangman had become Judas in his mind. No, but seriously, the song lyrics relate so much to Hangman, to the point that you'd think it's actually his theme song. Hangman was so down bad after what he did to the Young Bucks, and the Young Bucks were completely mad at him, and they confronted him at the bar, obviously, and they said to them that all they ever wanted was a friend, but he's so insecure that he didn't believe he was good enough to be their friend. Then they threw his drink in his face and called him nothing but a drunk and kicked him out of the elite. And as soon as they walked out the room, the mirror broke, leaving a despondent, drunk Hangman staring into the broken abyss of the shattered mirror. And this might be an Oscar-worthy cinematic masterpiece. In the words of MJF, it was Moi, si magnifique. And at this point, Kenny was really the only person that Hangman had. So Hangman clinged onto his friendship with Kenny by being even more cooperative with him. And this led to a feud with FTR. And justifiably, Hangman was pissed off at FTR for betraying him. But Hangman was so angry at them that it was causing him to argue with Kenny Omega. And this all led to a match at AEW's All Out 2020 between FTR and Hangman and Kenny for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Hangman was so desperate to keep Kenny Omega and was so enraged by FTR. FTR that he had a kayfabe bad night and him and Kenny Omega were not in sync just like in the early days and this caused them to lose the tag team championships to FTR and after the match an exhausted hangman looked to Kenny to embrace him for support but Kenny just let him fall as if to say I was the last person to believe in you but you let me down. Hangman was truly alone at this point. Everyone who's ever cared about him has left and he just proved to everyone that he's worthless and he leans on alcohol to get through the pain. And this is where the Dark Order ramp up their efforts to recruit him. The Dark Order try their damnedest hardest to recruit Hangman, but Hangman declines time and time again. And the reason he gives them is that he's been in groups before and he knows they don't work out and he doesn't want to go through it again. It's not that he doesn't want friends, it's just that he doesn't want to get hurt again so he's protecting his energy. 
Kentucky. So the eliminated tournament rolls around and Hangman makes it to the final and his opponent is none other than his former tag team partner, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega defeats Hangman and goes on to win the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And at this same pay-per-view that Hangman lost to Kenny Omega, full gear, the Young Bucks capture the tag team gold against FTR. And as they are celebrating in the ring, Hangman is just standing there in the tunnel, almost like he wants to go out and celebrate with his former friends. But he's messed everything up so bad that he just can't do it. This was reflected in BTE when the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega were celebrating their title win and Hangman was just standing there outside the room. And it seemed like everybody else was better off without them. And they all seem happier without them. Hangman realizes this and he takes it to heart and he goes further down his path of self-destruction. And this was shown when the Dark Order was hurt by Hangman's declining of their group and they started to turn on it. So they started to chant amongst themselves, Hangman. And Hangman heard this from another room and he walked into the Dark Order surprise and started chanting F Hangman with them. This just showed how much Hangman truly hated himself and how lowly he viewed himself. He went on to not be part of the Dark Order but he hung out with them a lot. Unfortunately the leader of the Dark Order, Brody Lee, passed away sadly at the end of 2020 and the plan was originally for Hangman to free the Dark Order from Brody Lee's grips but his untimely passing stopped this. And through Brody's passing the Dark Order became the most wholesome group in all of professional wrestling and Hangman Adam Page was hanging out with them more and more as they provided him with the type of support that he always needed. The Dark Order were always there for Hangman and genuinely care about Hangman. And this was just so beautiful to see because it seemed like Hangman finally found a place that he was happy at. Fast forward to the Dynamite post AEW's Double or Nothing in 2021. Kenny Omega is standing in the middle of the ring as the AEW World Champion and he's saying that he's beaten everybody worthwhile in AEW and that he has no more credible challenges left. And then the Dark Order comes out without Hangman and they say that they think he's forgetting someone who they believe can beat him and be champion. Kenny Omega scoffs at this idea and he states that Hangman Adam Page doesn't even believe that he deserves to hold the title. After the segment, Hangman then angrily confronted the Dark Order for confronting Kenny Omega on his behalf without his permission. But then they let Hangman know that he shouldn't be afraid of failure and that win or lose that they'll always love him and have his back and that he should believe in himself and that he deserves the AEW World Championship. This reassurance from the Dark Order really helped Hangman to believe in himself and this causes Hangman Adam Page to muster up the courage the following week to come out for the save when Kenny Omega and the Super Elite were attacking the Dark Order. Hangman Adam Page laid everybody out and just as he was about to buckshot Larry at Kenny Omega, he stopped and froze, which is the exact same parallel that I was referring to at the end of the match at AEW's Revolution 2020. The storytelling is quite literally off the charts, and following this, Hangman and Kenny Omega have an intense stare down. Hangman Adam Page has the unique skill to tell a story with his eyes. Just with his gaze, you could tell that he's saying to Kenny Omega, Sure, you've had the upper hand on me in the past, and I've failed a lot in the past, but I'm different now and don't underestimate me because I know I deserve the AEW World Championship. The following week, Hangman Adam Page is in the middle of the ring and he acknowledges that he's failed before but he needs the championship and the elite come out and Matt Jackson attempts to make him feel guilty by saying that they're the friends that he abandoned and he berates Hangman for his alcoholism and tells him that he's the only person to blame for all of his troubles and that he's the next great wrestling tragedy. Now that's a burn. The Dark Order come out and a brawl breaks out. It ends up setting up a 5v5 elimination Survivor Series style match. And if Hangman and the Dark Order win, then Hangman gets a shot at the AEW World Championship and the Dark Order gets a shot at the AEW Tag Championships. But if they lose, then they lose all of the title opportunities. Fast forward to the elimination 5v5 match and Hangman Adam Page embraces his role as a member of the Dark Order. Usually before, it was always Hangman Adam Page and the Dark Order, but now Oh, it, the nameplate just said the Dark Order and Hangman had Dark Order inspired gear. At this point you could tell that Hangman really feels that he's a part of something and it was just so wonderful to see. And then it was Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page in the final two. And unfortunately, Hangman Adam Page lost to Kenny Omega after he hit a one-winged angel. This was hard to watch because as a fan, you finally believe that this was Hangman's moment. It was his time, but this wasn't the case. And in the following week on AEW Dynamite, in a segment between Hangman and the Dark Order, 
Hangman told the Dark Order that he feels like he cost them the tag team titles and he let everybody down so he feels like it's best to go their separate ways. The Dark Order tried to reassure Hangman that this isn't the case but Hangman is adamant that he wants to go their separate ways so the Dark Order eventually agreed to give him space. And this is a great parallel to when Hangman Adam Page asked the Elite if he could leave the group. When Hangman asked the Elite to leave the group they absolutely refused but with the Dark Order they agreed to give him space and this just shows how good of friends the Dark Order really are for Hangman Adam Page. And later on in the show, Hangman is in the ring about to cut a promo and the Elite came out to confront him. Kenny Omega said that Hangman is trying to find self-worth in trying to win the AEW title. And Kenny Omega rubs in Hangman's failures and says that he's a tryhard and that the Elite are way better without him because he's a loser. And then a brawl breaks out and the Super Elite proceed to beat the shit out of Hangman. The Dark Order come out for the save but this was unsuccessful as a few members held the Dark Order back as they respected Hangman's wishes of them giving him some space. So they left Hangman alone to get beat up. Before the final blow, Kenny Omega said that Hangman Adam Page will never ever have the AEW World Championship and then he knocked him over the head with the belt and Hangman's lifeless body lay there in the middle of the ring and that's where we are so far in the story of Hangman Adam Page. Hangman's story in AEW is one of the most agonizing, relatable and interesting stories in wrestling of all time and his character arc is so relatable because many of us can put ourselves in his position and we see ourselves in him and can understand why he sometimes does the things that he does even though it's bad for him. As we've all experienced experience self-doubt and not believe in ourselves or even sabotage ourselves because we're afraid to fail or even because we're afraid to succeed. But Hangman Adam Page's story teaches us that even if we fail, we should always get back up. And I believe Hangman Adam Page will eventually pick himself up from the dirt, dust himself off and be right back on the saddle of his horse and win the AEW World Championship soon. Thank you for watching the video. This took a lot of work to make so please like, share, comment and subscribe and follow me on my socials. But anyway, thank you again for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.